Hi, I'm Elise. I'm with the UC Davis Tahoe Environmental Research Center, and today we're talking about beach trash. As you can see behind me, we're at Moon Dunes Beach, and this is just the wreckage from yesterday. So we're going to head on to the beach and find some of those smaller plastics that may have broken down. The materials I have with me are my data sheet, a brown paper bag to collect any plastics I find, and a meter stick. When scientists are laying out their sampling plot, they like to do half of the plot above the rack line and half below. So this beach doesn't have a very distinct rack line. That's where all of the debris from the highest waves has been deposited. And that's organic material like pine cones, sticks, and also plastics. And so we're just gonna walk along the beach until we find where most of that debris has been deposited and then lay out our plot with this meter stick. I'm just gonna go ahead and mark out a one meter by one meter square. And I'm just gonna get creative and mark it out with some pine cones. Now that we've laid out our plot, we're going to fill out the first section of our data sheet. And I've already done that to save a little time. What's really important to pay attention to on this data sheet are the current weather conditions and the recent weather trends. And that's because uh, different weather trends can affect how much plastic you might find on the beach. We're gonna move on to this second section of our data sheet. And there are three key words on our data sheet, which are macroplastics, mesoplastics, and microplastics. And the uh, size categories are laid out for you right on this sheet, but I made myself a little cheat sheet using our meter stick. Um, so anything that is greater than two and a half centimeters, which is this length, will be considered a macroplastic. Anything that is between 0 0.5 centimeters or five millimeters and 2.5 centimeters, so anything in this zone, will be a mesoplastic and anything smaller than 0.5 centimeters is a microplastic. Let's systematically go across our plot and see if we can find any examples. Right away, we can see this green piece. We're gonna measure that up against my little cheat sheet. And that is obviously greater than 2.5 centimeters. So that is gonna count it as a macroplastic. So I'm gonna put a tally for number of pieces found. And then for possible source material, I'm pretty positive this is from an applesauce container. And then I'm gonna put this in my paper bag so I can pick it off the beach. And as you go along, just scan through the sand and some of them might be harder to find than others. This tiny piece of white plastic might be easily missed when you first see it, but this is actually a microplastic because it's smaller than 0.5 centimeters. And so we're gonna tally that in microplastics. We found one. And I have no real idea what kind of plastic this could have been. I know it's a fragment. The possible source material for this is unknown. I'm gonna put it into the bag. And then we continue to scan. And you can always dig through about the first few centimeters of sand until you find another piece. And you might recognize this. And let's measure it. So this is just bigger than 0.5 centimeters. So this would be considered a mesoplastic. So we're gonna put a tally mark for mesoplastic. And then I am pretty positive that this is a piece of styrofoam. So as the possible source material, I'll put styrofoam. And I'm just going to continue the same process, scanning back and forth across my plot, making sure that I'm catching those tiny little pieces that might blend in pretty easily. I just took 10 minutes to look through this sample site and I found as many microplastics, mesoplastics, and macroplastics as I could and recorded them on my data sheet. That 10 minute window is really important because we wanna make sure that some students aren't spending a quick 30 second overview and some students aren't spending three hours digging through the sand and finding as many pieces as possible. And that's really good scientific practice to keep our uh, parameters the same across the board. So these are the results that I got. As you can see, I found three macroplastics, uh, which were these three items. Um, some of them I knew the source and some of them I didn't. Found six mesoplastics. And for microplastics, I found 10. And it was harder to tell what the microplastics, what their source material was. And so instead I just wrote different shapes. So fragments, styrofoam, it was easier to tell, or films. Um, this would be considered a filament. And the total number of pieces of plastic I found was 19. And the most common size class 
was actually microplastic. The last section of this activity are the discussion questions, which are on the back of your data sheet. And you can discuss these with somebody in your household, or you can just write down the answers to the best of your ability and discuss them with your class. Thanks so much for following along with this activity, and we really hope that you take this to heart and educate some of your peers and family members about the plastic pollution problem here at Lake Tahoe.